In this video I'll be showing you how to UV map a 3D modeled character in 3ds Max. One of the first steps we want to do is select all of our objects that make up our character and apply the unwrap UVW modifier to all of them. The next thing I'm actually showing you is to turn off the map seam option so that way we only see the cut seams that we're creating. So that's what I'm starting right now uh, is using the peel and pelt mapping tools to be able to cut apart my object. So the method that I'm going to show you with this character is to UV map uh, the model using the peel and pelt mapping options. This is a different form of UV mapping uh, which allows us to more effectively UV map more organic forms like uh, characters or any kind of organic object uh, a, little bit, a lot more efficiently. So uh, this also allows us to not have to do as much cleanup work or as much editing of the UVs later down the road. Um, it kind of does many of those steps for you through the major UV mapping uh, pelt options. So I'm really showing you right now is the cut seams, which are these blue seams here. The green seams that you saw at the beginning uh, are the map seams. The map seams are already the ones that are created or ones created from UV mapping. So every model already has basic uh, seams set up uh, on every 3D model. And usually we don't want to keep those UVs as they are as default. We want to edit those and UV map uh, the objects, and in particular this point of view, uh, the character's body parts, uh, more individually so that way we can texture them uh, for the intended purpose of this character. So I'm really showing how to create the seams and what we're doing is trying to find the easiest way to cut apart our 3D form so that way we can texture it in a 2D form. So what I'm really doing is breaking apart as you saw to begin with the torso, uh, all the major kind of extremities, the head, the arms, and the legs from the torso. And now I'm moving out to the arm uh, where I broke apart the arm and also have a cut seam down the length of the arm. So that way it kind of unfolds that like a piece of paper. And then I'm cutting apart the hand, so I have a front and a back part of the hand, then also on uh, the nails or the claw portions. The second part is a little bit sped up here because it's essentially the same thing as the, the other arm, uh, where most models, as far as for characters, would have roughly the same uh, UV mapping uh, done to both the right and the left side. So sometimes we do still want to have different UV sections for these, but they can be UV mapped the same. So essentially it's the same cuts, but on the other arm, kind of showing you all the different sections. So then moving up from the torso, now we're going to UV map the head. So we want to take out any cavities on the head, so I'm cutting out the uh, mouth, I'm cutting out the ears, and since the eyes already are uh, a cut hole, then I don't have to actually create a cut seam for that. So this will allow me to be able to go through and cut the pieces out. I'm also creating a seam from the back of the neck to where the hairline would be, or the top of the head, which will help kind of split apart uh, the uh, face so that I can texture the face and not have any seams on the face. I've actually done the same thing with the back. There's a cut seam from kind of the crotch area all the way to the neckline on the back so that way the front of the character doesn't have any seams. So here I'm now showing you the UV mapping or not really UV mapping yet but creating the cut seams for uh, the legs and the feet. So the same thing for the legs. I create uh, the seam circles around the ankles all the way to the uh, hips and then a line from the inside of the leg all the way down to the bottom of it so that I can unwrap the leg as a piece of paper as well. Kind of doing the same thing for the feet as I did for the hands, uh, for the top and bottom part of the foot, as well as cutting off the individual nails or claws. So what I'm doing here is important to understand with UV mapping is using peel and pelt mapping is that I'm not actually UV mapping yet. I'm just gonna, I'm right now just creating the cut seams to tell the system where to UV map the pieces. So the blue seams are only actually telling the system where to cut apart the geometry. It's not really uh, cutting anything apart yet. So I'm now showing you kind of the major uh, shells, which is the different pieces that are cut off uh, with the cut seams. So next step is actually to use the cut seams um, and the shells to actually UV map or flatten out the 3D forms. And this is through the pelt mapping uh, command under the peel section. So the tool I'm using to actually create the seams is the point to point seam tool. Uh, it is under the peel section is the second from the left where it says seams. Also it's important to save properly. These systems and programs can cr uh, crash or uh, fail on you so make sure you save that way you won't lose your work. The other tool that you could use to create the seams is the point or is, excuse me the edit seam tool which is allows you to create the seams based off of the edges. The point to point seams allow you to create uh, the seams based off of clicking on points and you can also skip over uh, edges so that way you don't actually have to click on every individual edge. Next part here is actually showing you 
uh, how how I am UV mapping the other body parts. So if you have any other body parts you need to animate or move separately, like a tongue, teeth, eyes, uh, weapons, holsters, whatever it might be for your character, uh, you need to UV map those with the actual body as well. So that's why it was important to begin with to select all of the objects and not just individual objects, but select all the objects you want to UV map and apply the unwrap UVW modifier to all of them at once instead of just one individually. So this way you can see all the UVs within one UV set if you drag select all objects we're just having to see just individual ones with uh, each individual object. So basically all I'm doing is trying to break apart each object into a 2D form as in like a piece of paper. Um, so uh, all these teeth are really done the same so that's why it's sped up a little bit more. Uh, the same process, I think I even skip over a little bit with the final ones uh, just to kind of save some time with the video. Uh, same process with each tooth. Uh, creating a seam down the vertical line uh, to cut apart so it kind of unwraps like a piece of paper. So it's important to make sure you uh, create your cut seams for every object before you go using the pelt and peel mapping. You don't have to do this all of your objects at once. You can even just do one shell at a time. But I like to go ahead and create all my seams to begin with so that way I kind of can black out in my mind how I'm going to UV map this before I actually get to unwrapping the objects. So once again, keep saving so that way you don't lose your work. So the next part is actually selecting one face and then clicking on that expand face select the seam uh, option, which will select the entire torso. And showing you the first method is just using the individual pelt mapping option. So it brings up the pelt mapping tool tools to where I can select the stretcher. Usually I want to scale this out to give the pelting a little bit larger of a room. So just like pelting an animal, it is based off of the seams or the cut edges and it allows you to be able to flatten out the 3D form based off of your cut seam. So it does a pretty good job uh, with just that basic function. It has a couple small areas as it shows here where there are some overlapping UVs. You could even try to use that relax uh, feature under tools, relax there. Sometimes you could get a little bit more um, accuracy with it, but other times it might not work too well like it's showing here. So sometimes there is still some cleanup with UV mapping where you need to go back and mainly move around UVs. Uh, there's just some times you can never get around that. So just going through here and just kind of clean up this area, a little bit slower of the area in the video. But sometimes it's necessary, so using the uh, translate, rotate, and scale options for each individual piece, making sure that there's no overlapping UVs like there are right here. So just kind of clean it up, make sure each UV occupies its own space. So uh, the other method is to use this kind of uh, reset or quick um, peel tool, which is the far right tool in the peel section, and what that really does, it shows here, is go ahead and flattens out the entire character uh, within that object, all of the major shells according to these seams that we created. So this kind of reset those UV seams that we did from that basic pelt option, but with the uh, reset peel tool, uh, it allows you to be able to go ahead and kind of flatten everything out, uh, unfold everything all at once. So. We don't want to leave it like this because there's a lot of negative space on the UV map or UV area here. Um, so we want to go back and edit some of these, as I'll show you here in a minute, um, to be able to then go back through uh, and occupy that space a little bit better with the shells according to how I want to texture this uh, character. So what I want to do first is actually take some of the major pieces here uh, and move into what's called peel mode, which is the center button under the peel options on the right side of the edit window. First off, what I want to do is select the uh, major areas of, or major UVs, as I just showed there, uh, around the form and click on the Add Pin Tool. So there's the Pin section right underneath the Pill Tool, and this kind of creates those blue pins, which saves those positions and allows me to be able to adjust the other UVs around the uh, shell here, so that way it'll better match how I want the UVs to look. So with the Pill Mode, I first set the pins how I want them to be, and then go back and edit the UVs so that they're better formed or better shaped how I want them to look. That's basically what I'm going to do for each individual form. So there are my arms and moving over here to my short stubby legs for this character. Uh, I really want them to look more like square shapes if they're, the UVs are more squares uh, as far as if I'm texturing within Photoshop. It really allows me to be able to have a lot less distortion or stretching of the textures on the UVs. So it doesn't have to be completely perfect uh, squares but if it's a little bit more square of a shape it'll be able to texture a lot better, a lot easier for me. So I'm going to take in those legs and kind of create more of a square shape for those. So basically what I'm going to do is go around to each major shape and make sure it is UV mapped to roughly the shape that I want it to look like. Make sure there's no overlapping UVs and make sure I'm adjusting the shapes so it'll be able to texture how exactly I want it to. 
So now a lot of these uh, programs like 3ds Max, um, with advancements in these programs, will allow us to be able to actually paint on these objects in 3D. Um, so programs like 3ds Max, Mudbox, ZBrush, will allow you to paint directly on the 3D objects. So it's not particularly important to make sure all of the UVs are completely clean and as accurate as possible. We just want to make sure that the UVs are uh, not overlapping and that it is roughly the shapes that we want them to be. So here's showing you uh, using the pill mode to go back and edit the facial shapes of the head. So getting the shapes how I want to, it kind of distorts the mouth shape a little bit, so going back through and kind of adding that mouth shape a little more. Going over to the eyes and to the ears, just editing the shapes uh, so that way uh, I can see and understand each major form where the head, where the eye is. So then I'm moving over to the foot section and then over to the hands. There's some overlapping over here, so using the pinning and the quick mode or quick peel mode and the peel mode tools uh, allows me to be able to go through and make sure I'm getting rid of all those overlapping UVs so that way they occupy their own space. Once again, it doesn't always have to be perfect, but just going through, kind of cleaning up my major shapes however I need them to look. Okay, so in the next section, uh, after you get everything UV mapped and make sure there's no overlapping UVs, um, with the pet mapping options, that step really kind of streamlines the whole process of UV mapping. But um, there's still some kind of editing, some kind of cleanup to do, and placement of the UVs in that UV space, that square that you see there. Um, so that way, everything is visible and uh, scaled proportionately according to how I need to texture the object. So I'm just taking a lot of the major shapes, like the mouth, uh, the ear shapes for the head, and placing them near one another, just so that I can know this is where the whole head shape is. I'm moving the fingernails and kind of toenail sections over so I can know where they are. So like the bottom left and bottom right ones are going to be the toes, so I have them kind of in the triangle shape just as they are shaped in the object. And then the fingers are on top of that just as they're shaped uh, on the model as well. And then placing the hands and the feet right, right next to the uh, fingernails, that way I can just know where uh, my individual shapes are. Basically you just want to make sure as you're UV mapping that you can understand exactly where your body parts are. So I've already UV mapped the eyes, the tongue, and the t uh, teeth uh, separately. Those are done the same exact way as what I was showing you earlier. And also what I'm doing is scaling the individual UV shells so that way I can texture the larger forms or the areas I want to have the most detail with so that way they occupy the largest space. So the head and the torso and even the arms and the legs really occupy a lot, lot larger of an area than like the fingers, the eyeball, the hands do. So what I'm doing is trying to pack all of my UV shells into my UV space as large as I can uh, without overlapping any of the shells and without uh, overlapping the corners or the edges of that UV space. So moving the arms and the legs and then the feet and the hands into place. And rotating things around as you need to just that way you can still understand what pieces are what. Uh, but also be able to use as much of that UV space as possible. The last part is the teeth here. so I'm just changing the position of some of these, scaling them down so that it fits. And here's my final UV uh, map here where everything is um, saved again and everything is occupying the UV space as accurately as I can. So basically as I'm UV mapping, uh, whether I'm going to be texturing in Photoshop or texturing in 3ds Max or Mudbox or another 3D package, I must UV map all of my forms within this 0 to 1 UV space before I start texturing. Um, so this takes some practice in being able to go through and uh, UV map using the pelt and peel tools. This is a lot easier of a tool uh, than relying on the projection mapping for very organic forms like this. So one of the last things I'm going to do is actually go through and create uh, the UV map so I can export the file out to be textured in another program like Photoshop. And if you go under Tools, uh, Render UV Template, uh, you can change the resolution, whether it's 1024 or something higher or lower. Uh, you can change any of the visible settings if you want to. Uh, and then click Render UVs and it will come up with a separate window which will allow you to be able to save your UVs out uh, in a TIFF, Targa, JPEG format, whatever file you want to, uh, to be able to uh, texture your character now. So that'll wrap it up here. So if you enjoyed UV mapping with the pelt and peel tool.